Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. Maria Lawrence, an all-star. Good morning. Oh, I thought it was the star, not all-star, the star. I, I have many monikers, yeah. Bill. You know this. But uh, none of them really give you full Capture credit. it all. Yeah, yeah. Queen Bee, well, all those things. I thought of you yesterday. We had uh, Shane uh, Shadows is his wrestling name. They're putting on a show at the Berkeley County Youth Fair oh. wrestling program this Saturday. I sent you my new photos. He knows right? your son. Uh, son-in-law. Really? Yes. Okay. He, he is familiar with him in the wrestling circles. That's, okay. It's they're, a tight fraternity. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. Yeah. So. He was familiar with his previous act, the Atlas okay. act. Right. Yeah. So. Right, right, right. At, well, I had a friend who texted me last night and said, are we going to Cleveland on August 24th? And I was like. She's following him. This is a college <laughs> friend of mine who is following his next big appearance. So is he I was in Cleveland? Like, yes. Yeah, because Shane's Cleveland. going to Cleveland too. Yeah. I said, well, yeah. do you want to go to Cleveland? So we'll make it a weekend. Sure. <laughs> anyway. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is there. That's what I said, yeah. that we can, we can do that too. I flew up to Cleveland in, this was in the 80s, late 80s, April to do a job interview for a job in Washington, D.C., but the office was in Cleveland. I had to go interview. And in Washington, D.C., it was 65, 70 degrees. I had on a thinner spring suit, and I got to the Cleveland airport, and there was four inches of snow on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to... I ain't working here. Yeah, yeah. If Pittsburgh is yeah, that's cool in enough. that snow belt, Cleveland is on steroids. Times in two. That. Yeah. All right, yeah. Uh, let's welcome in our guests on the program via telephone, Senator Patricia Rucker. Patricia, good morning to you. Good morning. And in studio, candidate for Senate, former Delegate John Doyle. John? Good morning, everybody. Great to have you here. Great to be here. Well, in an era of political divisiveness, nastiness, and enmity, yesterday, <laughs> these two attempted to change the entire dynamic of political discourse, it's almost like they listened to Bill Stubblefield yeah. along the way. Returning back to the good old days where people were nice to each other. That's the way Civil. it should be in politics. Yeah, John and uh, Patricia held a press conference in which they announced that they would be holding some debates, and, and they are going to have a, a different format for their debates, too. John, would you care to describe? Yeah, we're going to have two debates, uh, one in Shepherdstown, one in Inwood. Uh, the, the Senate district is... Uh, almost half and half Jefferson Berkeley in population. I think it's about 55% Jefferson and 45% Berkeley in terms of population. So we're going to do one in each. Um, and we're going to, we're going to do the first one, see if this works with no moderator, just the two of us. Uh, and we're going to trust each other to be courteous to each other in terms of, of, of time. Uh, we'll alternate calling on people in the audience to ask questions. Uh, and all we, we want from the audience is to simply ask the question, be respectful, uh, and, and don't try and insult either one of us or, or we're going to stop you. <laughs> we're just going to say stop right there. That's not what this is about. Patricia, uh, how much of a conversation did you and John have together to come up with this thought in terms of how to conduct this election? Well, I, I will admit it was very hard for John to get a hold of me. <laughs> he had to call a lot. <laughs> but, no, we, um, we, we, of course, talked several times to, you know, work on the details. And, and it was John's idea, and I thought it was a good idea. And he's done it before when he's campaigned previously, and I've attended those debates. And there, I, I think just gives an opportunity to um, folks to really get a much better idea of where their, um, the candidate stands on issues and get more in detail than you do at a typical forum where they give you one minute to respond. And you know, I'm really looking forward to it. And plus, um, John and I respect each other. We get along well. I know that we differ on our opinions of things, but we can do that without, you know, any kind of um, resentment or disrespect. I mean, I respect John. I respect his opinions. I respect where he's coming from. And I feel that he has always respected me also. I got a text from uh, the president of the moderators union, and he said they're going to protest. <laughs> they're going on strike. They're going to protest this, uh, this debate. Moderators unemployment uh, numbers have doubled, uh, by the way, and they don't think you're helping the situation at all. 
Okay. Incidentally, speaking of moderating, uh, Patricia just said that she's attended some of the debates that I've been in. In fact, in 2010, she moderated one of them. No kidding. Yeah, I was uh, debating Elliot Simon, uh, and it was uh, at uh, uh, the Clarion Hotel in Harpers Ferry. And that's when I really first met Patricia, and I knew that she was on Elliot's side. But the way she moderated that debate is the first time that I came to the conclusion, this is a fair person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's quite yeah. a compliment. I don't know whether you remember that, Patricia. <laughs> um, I do remember that, and that's very kind of you to say. I certainly did try. <laughs> you now, succeeded. Now, the first debate you may have mentioned is going to be at the Bird Center on, on Shepherd Campus. Yeah, the Robert and C. What, Bird Center for Congressional History and Education. What's it, the time? Uh, it's Tuesday, October 1st, 7 p.m. And yeah, and uh, we're gonna. Uh, we haven't found the location yet, or the or the date for Inwood, but uh, we hope to have that really soon. And you folks will know about it as soon as we know. Well, we appreciate that, uh, Patricia. Have you ever done any type of political appearance under these rules? Not counting the time that you moderated John's debate, of course. <laughs> have I ever done? Any political experience? You mean at that time? No, uh, under oh. the, under these uh, conditions that, that you're going to be oh. operating under with John. No, no, I have not. Um, in in the last two races that I have had, it has always been the um, you know the the forums by the organizations, um, including Stubblefield Institute. Uh, four years ago, they did a, a forum with me and um, my opponent. But no, this is the first time I'm doing this type of um, event. Yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah, I've never done one like this before either. So, yeah. John, what? Talk a little bit about what sort of spawned this idea. Besides the Stubblefield Institute, of course. Um, well, I thought of it before the Stubblefield Institute. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> no problem. sorry, Admiral. I'm just giving I'm, him. I'm, you I, just I, didn't I, have the millions <laughs> behind you to make it a dream. That is correct. That is no. And besides, he's got two silver stars. I had one silver bar. Uh, so I'm way below him in rank. No, what happened was after the primary, the night of the primary, I called Patricia to congratulate her on winning the primary. And we talked for, for a couple, three minutes, and I said, hey, would you want to have some debates? She said, oh, yeah, that would be fun. So that, that's really where it started. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as you look at this election coming up here in the state, and it's getting closer by the day, of course, John, what do you think are the biggest issues coming up for November of uh, 2024? Well, if you're talking about state races or local races. I'm talking about the one that's going to get you elected to the Senate or defeated trying to. Um, obviously, the tax question is one because uh, Governor uh, and, and, and Patricia, let's not let him trick us into having a debate right here. Okay? <laughs> no, un <laughs> un 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 under understand that is not the intent yeah, of I know, this I know, interview. I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, clearly, because... However, that said, how do you feel about this compared to how <laughs> <laughs> Governor Justice has proposed doing away with the income tax, which I think is a really dumb idea. Uh, th that is one of them. Um, the question of how, how do we fund our public schools? How, how, what do we do about our prison situation, wh which I think has still not been solved? Uh, and and uh, uh, and I'm I'm open to ideas about how to solve it. Uh, there there are any of a number of things like this that I I think the the the, the people who come to our debates I think can can be educated by listening to the two of us, and Patricia and I can be educated by their questions. So that's what uh, what this is all about. Patricia, John, what do you think of the biggest? You you don't want to go to Patricia just yet? No, no. I, a very quick question on that. Uh, the, what you're describing, there's going to be a whole litany of stuff. It would be interesting discussion. Will there be a time limit for the debate? Do you? Uh, it's ninety minutes. Open in. Yeah, it's ninety, 90 minutes. minutes. Ninety minutes. We've agreed okay. on ninety minutes. Yeah. Patricia, so if what the you... first question comes, John, and it takes you forty-five of those ninety minutes to. <laughs> Um, I, not that that would ever happen, but how will you... Is she taking a shot at you, John? I did not. I yes, she did. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> we all know each other here. But I mean, how, how do you keep things sort of in check there, John, to... 
be able to make that happen. And I'm I'm going to wait for Patricia to answer this, too, because I have some idea about how she's going to answer it, because I've heard her answer it before. Since this is kind of a different subject, hold on, because I want to get Patricia's thoughts on the same first question I asked you. I don't want to get off the rails here, (laughs) right? Patricia, what do you think would be the biggest issues of this upcoming election? Um, Well, so when... My experience going door to door, folks are really concerned about the solar farms. They're very concerned about, you know, property rights issues, and they're very concerned about national politics. And I will tell you that, um, you know, obviously there's there's always going to be the folks who who like to, you know, um, John said, you know, ask questions about taxes, ask questions about some social issues, um, guns, life, but. What I'm experiencing as I am meeting with folks is right now their concerns are really on local, either national or local, really hyper-local issues like those solar farms. All right. Now to Maria's question about the debate (laughs) and the structure of it and such. Exactly. Yeah. This format will put the onus on each of us to be courteous to the other. Okay. And I think we can both do that. Uh, Mm -hmm. There will be some questions where I might want to take a couple of minutes to answer the question and you go to Patricia and she might either say a simple yes or no. There would be probably other questions where it would be opposite. It's an issue that uh, Senator Rucker might want to extrapolate on and give a give an explanation of why she has the position she has and it'll come to me and I'll just simply say I disagree or I agree and Leave it go with that. Uh, I I think that's a much better format than the arbitrary. Each candidate has 30 seconds to answer the question. Yeah, what it does, when you have that, uh, Maria, if if, uh, uh, a question comes and the candidate has 30 seconds to answer it, if it's a one and a half minute answer, they have to try and compress it. And it sounds a little awkward. By the same token, if it's a simple yes or no, they feel some obligation to fill up to the fill remaining up the 30 seconds with nonsense. Exactly. <laughs> that's kind of like I, how I, I do will, this show. Uh, yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. I, I, will, I will tell you guys that I really think it, it's going to be um, actually really refreshing for the audience as well as for John and I. You know, to actually have the opportunity to fully answer a question is just so much more satisfying for everyone involved and not to criticize, you know, the forums that occur because, you know, you do have limited time. But I just think it's going to be a um, really great uh, opportunity to really get to know where John and I stand on issues. We're looking forward to good, interesting questions um, from the folks in our district. And um, I think it's going to be a really uh, great thin because they will see that John and I can disagree without name calling. You know, the statement you just uh, issued there, Patricia, about giving a politician the opportunity to fully answer a question. We are in a soundbite society, and uh, as a person who is trained in journalism and news as a young pup in college, uh, this is one of the more disturbing things to me that we boil down what is a complex answer into seven seconds. And one of the reasons why most of the interviews on this show are 25 minutes is because we want to give somebody a full opportunity to answer a question as thoroughly as is necessary so we can all understand it because that's the purpose of it. So this is the reason why we do the show in the format that we do this show in so that we're not taking you a complex issue and saying, John, you got eight seconds to answer this question. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't want to do that. Uh, by the way, ER, uh, A.R. Mert has already given you guys the name to publicize this as it goes forward. We've got Jammin' John Doyle versus Rockin' Patricia Rucker. What do you guys <laughs> think about that? Jammin' John and Rockin' Rucker. Uh, I, I'm glad you laughed, Patricia. Thank you for laughing. And getting ready to rumble. That's yeah. the part that Rob left yeah. off. That's intellectually. The wrestling. We're going to intellectually rumble. Yeah. rumble. Yes, it's an Absolutely. intellectual rumble. John, <laughs> John, you're still kind of in the early stages of, of, of planning this. Mm-hmm. Do you anticipate you'll be on Zoom or Scream some way? Or Screaming rather than Zooming? Well, we don't know that. And, and one of the things that uh, Senator Rucker and I talked about before we you know, agreed, yes, definitely we're going to do this, is that we did want to do it in Martinsburg because we assumed that WRNR would have us both on 
for a one of those half hour debates that you have mm-hmm. and that WEPM would do that too mm-hmm. and we figured the two together that would count for Martinsburg uh, now the Stubblefield Center has agreed to participate in the one in Shepherdstown because that is a date that Stubblefield uh, can fit theirs in and WEPM wants to join that and do kind of a zoom so we'll see about that uh, as to Inwood, a lot of it depends on whether the date we pick is one that is copacetic for the Stubblefield Center. Uh, and so uh, we, this is a work in progress, but okay, Bill is the real okay, answer okay, to that question. John, did you want to mention any other radio stations that we don't own that you wanted to <laughs> throw out their call letters for? Uh, there's time if there's another, if there's a whole list that you wanted to get in. I've got uh, another eight minutes and you 49 down seconds. That path. <laughs> we have not yet heard from WCHS in Charleston or West Virginia Public Broadcasting or Channel 4 in D.C. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, you do open yourself up, John. Uh, we all know you very well, so there hey, you go. On, it is what it is. An issue note. So, John, the last time you were elected to office... Mm-hmm. Uh, There was a corporation in Jefferson County, which became a very big issue. And Rockwool was the name of that corporation. You used it to help get elected to office. In fact, the night we uh, uh, interviewed you that you won, you said, what was the secret to me getting elected? Two words. Rockwool. Is it's one word is but you said two words. Uh, I remember I, I the quote. Said that. You I said really two said words. That. You were you were emphasizing the point. Patricia, okay. you brought up solar farms, and, and this seems to be unique to Jefferson County that these issues like this are the concentrated issues that can move a campaign in Jefferson County. Is is the solar farm issue, Patricia? This election cycle's rock wool. It may be. Um, I will tell you, it definitely seems to be something a lot of folks are very, very passionate about on both sides. Um, and it's not just um, Jefferson County. I, I actually am starting to hear it from my Berkeley County folks, too. Um, and folks are just concerned about, you know, how it's happening and where it's going and how it's affecting their property rights. So I think it's just going to be something that will be asked i was bringing it up as a very important issue but they may be surprised i don't think that john and i are this isn't one of the issues in which we're that far apart um which you know that's another part of this is i think folks will also find at this um you know debates that we're having that we actually do agree on some things we're we're not just polar opposites on everything uh, yeah, I, I, I was, uh, and, and incidentally, that was not the last time I ran. No. That Rockwell was the issue. That was the time before the last time I ran, you, w- was elected. So no, I just wanted to clear that up. You want an election after that? <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, it was 2018 that Rockwell was the big issue. I was elected then, then elected in 2020. Gotcha. Anyway, yeah, Senator Rucker and I worked together. Uh, to defeat the bill uh, in the legislature that would have given a blanket exemption uh, from local zoning to these solar farms. So, yeah, I would suspect we're not all that far apart on that issue. Uh, we'll we'll see as the as, as the uh, uh, as the campaign develops and as the uh, as as we start talking about it. But I agree with her. That is a big issue, and there are different opinions about that. It's more intense in Jefferson right now, but I sense that it, it is beginning to be that way in Berkeley as well. Why in Berkeley? I have not gotten that sense at all. Uh, looking at what is happening in Jefferson, folks saying, you know what? We've got some farms here, too, that might want to convert themselves to uh, 600, 800, 1,000 acre solar fields and, and go from farming to that. So that, that I think, is what uh, – uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not intense like it is in Jefferson. Yeah. But I do think there, you, you're finding some people beginning to worry that that might happen. How has the 16th district changed since the redistricting and, and uh, uh, that took place what, a couple of years ago? Patricia, John, how, how has the district changed? Um, we, I basically got a much more condensed district. I kept all of Jefferson County, but now it's mainly just Inwood and Booker Hill that's in the district. And I 
you know, we have a little bit of Martinsburg, basically King Street and down, but uh, lost huge sections. Um, the district used to go all the way to Spring Mills and, um, you know, Route 45 and all of this area just um, is no longer in the district. How did that change the percentage of registered Democrats versus registered Republicans and registered independents or non-affiliated? I, I think well, a little bit more Republican, but not a whole lot. That is my sense. Uh, Patricia, yeah. is that your sense? Yes, that's yeah. correct. So what did you at the beginning you said what the ratio was? 55-45 Republicans? No, or? no, no. This is this no, no, is no. the two counties. Yes. This is the population exactly. of the two counties. 55% so, Jefferson, oh, 45% Berkeley. And what is the what yeah. is the, do you know what the number of registered Republicans versus registered Democrats is in the district? I don't. I don't know the exact percentage, <laughs> but I can I can tell you that the um the district is still made up of um a lot of independents and unaffiliated, and it is not, um, I mean, I think this is one of those districts that could be fairly labeled a purple district. Do you know what the percentage of non-affiliated voters would be in the district? I know it's about almost, Jefferson, but I don't know about Berkeley. Well, I can tell you Berkeley is about uh, 30% Republican about 30% unaffiliated independent and about 20 some percent um, Democrat. And then you have the little others that, you know, are much is, smaller. Amount. What's Jefferson, John? Well, wait, Patricia, is that Berkeley as a whole or just a portion of Berkeley that just is in the district. 16th? Huh? Yeah, just, just my district. Okay, the just, 16th. Okay, yeah. Uh, Jefferson, the last I saw was about two or three months ago, was 36.5% independent. Uh, thirty five percent Republican and about twenty eight percent Democrat. That's a strongly yeah. represented independent district. Yeah, on, uh, Patricia, when the the Republicans uh, closed upcoming election, I uh, saw so allowing uh, you had to be a registered Republican to vote in the primary. Are you were you in support of that uh, that move? I was, yes. And your rate and your rationale, Ben. Um, well, I feel that, um, unfortunately, there are a lot of folks who are trying to just interfere in a primary and not really being um, authentically, you know, good intentioned. We really, truly, you know, want to vote for the best candidate. So um, it's a very unfortunate thing, but definitely get that feeling in some areas. And when... You start seeing the effects of that, especially on some local races. It, it can really make a difference in getting the very best candidate you can get. So for that reason, I was definitely open to closing it. Senator, describe what you mean about interfering. Um, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around that word. And I've got about 60 I'm seconds. Sure, yeah, I'm sure you guys have heard. I mean, you've, there's been um, social media posts about folks urging um, people who are to register as independent or unaffiliated for the purpose of being able to vote in a primary in order to vote for the candidate that is easier to beat. Well, we had a pretty good example of it in Morgan County with Daryl Coles a couple of years back. So anyway, we've got about 60 seconds left. The first of these two debates will be on October the 1st, and that'll be well, at the Well, we Bird don't Center. know that that's the first. It's possible the Inwood debate would come before one, that. One of the two debates will be right. October the 1st at the Bird Center. The second one to be somewhere in the southern end of the county, but uh, we don't know the date yet. Correct. I have that correct. All right, very good. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us by telephone. I hope you enjoyed the experience as much as I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry that I'm not there, but I am very grateful for the opportunity. Thanks for having us on. Thank you for joining us. And, John, I absolutely hope you enjoyed the experience as much as I did. I, I, I always look forward to being on Eastern Panhandle Talk. Thank you. It's Rock and Rucker versus Jam and John. At least two battles. I think more. Hang on to your hats. You don't want to miss any of this. Hey, in all sincerity, it's great what you guys are doing, and uh, Thank you. we hope to be strongly involved in that as well. This is Talk Radio, WRNR Martinsburg, and TV 10 back with more after these. <laughs>